Rwanda is best described as a land of 1,000 hills, the Alps of Africa. But the beauty and serenity of this landscape today belies its recent past. When Rwanda, the size of the state of Maryland, turned into a living hell. Just a little over a decade ago, its eight million people endured a travesty that will take generations to overcome. While the rest of the world turned down pleas for help in 1994, a four-year uprising of the Hutu extremists committed genocide against the minority Tutsi population. It resulted in the slaughter of more than one million innocent men, women, and children in just 100 days. 400,000 orphans were left homeless. Schools are destroyed and the students inside them executed. Five out of six of all Rwanda's surviving children witness bloodshed. Hope is buried beneath the countless bodies and a generation is lost. But today that hope has been reborn through some of the most traumatized of the genocide victims. These are the orphans attending Sunrise School. Sunrise School has become a model of Rwanda's reconciliation with its past and new faith for a promising future. Now identified simply as Rwandans instead of the divisive labeling of Hutu and Tutsi, children study and pray in harmony. Good. Founded by Episcopal Bishop John Ruciana in 2002, Sunrise School was built to provide not only an education for the generation of children who survived the genocide, but a chance to talk about the past and then hopefully heal. I saw when they were shooting her huh? and then how they shoot my, my sisters and brothers, how they throw knives my, my father. Sunrise students are gradually putting these nightmares behind. The increasing demand to attend this school is a testimonial to the healing process going on here. Beginning with a few classrooms just seven years ago, the school has grown to include grades one through 12. Affiliated with the Anglican Church next door, Sunrise can't expand fast enough. Now enrolling nearly 800 students, there is much food to be prepared and cooked. More beds must be added. Uniforms and clothes need replacing. And an adequate playground must be built. With the help of private donors in just seven years, Sunrise School has survived its rapid growth and has become so successful in reaching a high level of academic excellence that it is no longer thought of as an orphanage. It is now the number one academic primary school in Rwanda. The school has given them primarily the hope for their future. It has given them the mental health and the, and the physical health by providing for them and given them the excellence of education and the restoration of character and integrity. Bishop John's efforts to spread the word of Sunrise's goals is far-reaching. In 2006, American businessman and philanthropist Gaylord Layton saw the need and opportunity to transform Sunrise School from a basic academic experience to equal the best of any American college preparatory school. With the help of members of the Rotary Club in Denver, 180 computers, servers, and printers have been assembled and are now in use. It is one of the largest computer labs in any school in Africa. I came to Rwanda and I looked and I saw the need. And I said, if I do this, I can change the life of thousands of people. That's a big thing to say, but it's true. A few computers change the life of thousands of people. After they graduate, the children that graduate here will go on to have jobs, their wives will enjoy a better lifestyle, their children will be able to select the schools they go to, the community will be better, and Rwanda will be better. Students who have spent most of their lifetime at Sunrise agree that Rwanda can thrive from a new generation of well-educated and computer literate graduates. With her competence in computers, Munyana Joy believes her ambition to become an engineer 
will come true. But now, because you have the, the computers, I'm getting more information and reading some books from other libraries apart from ours. It is because of the genocide that these computers have taken on additional value. They are enabling the next generation after the genocide to transcend from the haunted isolation and guilty feelings of the past into feeling the hope of a promising future and opportunity outside Rwanda's borders. So the computer program to them becomes another additional healing and encouragement and, 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 and a boost into the future hopes and engagement for betterment in the future because they now know the computer becomes a tool for success in their future. So it, it makes them more excellent and more productive than ever before. But productivity is dependent on a computer laboratory that consistently works. The cost of hiring and training computer instructors, maintenance and upgrading is never ending. There must be continued financial support to ensure that this investment in these future leaders pays off. What we have achieved at Sunrise has brought up to a crucial level in between the ways at the junction where we either lose these children again or support them fully and reach a point where they can get a grip of, the, of life and be productive in the, in the future. So we are at a crucial moment in the life of these children. This is a unique time for Rwanda. Since the end of the genocide, Rwandans are gaining new confidence in a government which is helping them to put the past behind. They are being encouraged to forgive those who are now repenting, and there is much to rebuild economically and morally. This next generation especially wants to show the world their country's past mistakes will not be repeated. Many of us want to show Rwanda that our mistake of turning our backs will not be repeated either. Supporting the Sunrise School Computer Laboratory is a good place to send that message. If you would like to be involved with a project that saves the world in a small way, this is a place to invest. The kids of, these, of this school will be, will be a part of the future generation, the future leadership of Africa. Three, six,